Hey friend, it's Jasmine Lane. Thanks for checking out this video and of course for uh, heading over to this channel. If you like content like this, which presumably you do because you did click on the thumbnail, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Of course, you can like, share, more importantly, comment your thoughts below. Now in today's video, Wow, Pierre Polyev, he really rocked the crowd at the Calgary Stampede, and he touched on a few things that are so incredibly important, as well as a few others that a lot of my liberal friends have been arguing with me over lately. So we're going to watch this video, and then I'll jump in to just how perfectly he breaks down all of these arguments that I routinely hear from my liberal friends and family members and makes them make sense. The promise was very simple. You work hard, you can do anything you want in this country, that anyone from anywhere can do anything. <laughs> the hard work buys a, gets you a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. Yeah, which it really is not these days. You work hard, you get taxed harder. You work hard, you get laid off because all of the other people who are getting taxed harder and can no longer afford to keep you as an employee, even if you're really good, you work hard and you get really nothing in return, except for your tax dollars going towards more things that you don't use. Where the sky is literally the limit. And of course, here, there's the biggest sky on earth. But, you know, that promise, like everything else in Canada today, seems broken. In fact, to put it another way, it feels like we're a long way from home. People look around the country and they don't recognize the place. Housing costs have doubled, meaning three quarters of youth believe they'll never be able to afford a home. No home means no family. Let's also factor in how common it is nowadays that even through social media and celebrities and all these other influences, they are very actively pushing no kids. They want you to be single. Look at how many articles there are, all these things going viral about how men ain't shit and how you should just be single and being a trad wife is a bad thing. I, for one, love gardening, love cleaning, love cooking. I know that those are all wonderful qualities to have. And being a homemaker is not an insult. That's an incredible gift that you have. And rather than all of this woke nonsense, we should really be teaching future generations on how to better take care of themselves and the people that they love. That's not a bad thing. That's a superpower. It means no kids. When they go to the grocery store, they cry at the checkout because they can't afford the price tag. We now have two million people lined up at food banks. The Food Bank Association says 25% of Canadians now live below the poverty line, a record smashing number. Do you think it's bad out here? There are now 256 homeless encampments in Toronto. 50 opened in three months alone. Scenes that we would only have imagined in a third world country before Trudeau and the NDP took office and instituted a weird, woke ideology that not only seeks to take our money, punish our work, tax our food, and undermine our entrepreneurs, but also destroys our education, dishonors our history and divides our people. But the good news is life was not like this before Justin Trudeau and it won't be like this after he's gone. It is truly remarkable to see him work a crowd and the way that he's able to speak to people. And one of the ways that he's able to do that is because he really is so similar to us. You know, you have trust fund Trudeau whose wife came from, from a well-known family, he came from a well-known family, you really are living in completely different worlds. And then you have Polyev, on the other hand, who grew up 
an average Joe decided that he loved politics, wanted to get into it. His wife was not born here. She came from a life of hardship. The two of them met and now they have this plan. And while I mean, hey, who knows how much a new government can really do? As I always say at the bottom line, you are far more likely to be satisfied with your government if you have somebody representing you that can relate to you in a way that Justin Trudeau simply can't. You know, I can't entirely keep that promise because he might be gone, be gone before I arrive. There's talk of him heading the road real soon, eh? Do you hear about that by-election in Toronto? People in Toronto voted because he's not worth the cost. They wanted common sense conservatives instead. And ever since, Justin Trudeau has been in panic mode. He's not here at the stampede, is he? Nobody's seen him around. Is anybody missing him? But don't feel offended, Calgary, that Justin Trudeau is hiding from you. He's actually hiding from his own caucus. <laughs> Terrified to meet with the people who are supposed to be his greatest supporters. Soon, you can imagine a caucus meeting of the NDP liberals in a phone booth with just Jag and Justin. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Justin's in a lot of trouble now, eh? As Maggie Thatcher said, the problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money, right? And so now his MPs, who literally didn't care about the fact that their constituents couldn't eat, heat, or house themselves, they got home and they said, this election is gonna eventually happen, whether we like it or not, and we're all gonna be out of a job, and so we need to get ourselves a new leader because everyone is re realizing that while the emperor has many costumes, he has no clothes. <laughs> and so even the media's got in on the act. Have you seen this? So the first time in Justin Trudeau's career, they've started asking him some tough questions. Now, don't get too excited, because let's be clear, it's not that the media has finally realized that their job is to hold the government accountable to the people rather than the people accountable to the government. It's because they're trying desperately to get someone other than the dud who's leading the Liberal Party to take me on in the next election. But here's the bad news for them. Every other possible leader is just like Justin, right? So what have you got? You've got the finance minister whose idea of deficit <laughs> whose idea of deficit reduction is canceling Disney Plus. <laughs> You've got the, the the squeaky little guy who is responsible for industry who's handed out our billions of dollars to actually kill jobs. Or you've got the housing minister who caused both an immigration crisis and a housing crisis in under two years. And that's why what they want to do is bring someone in they can claim is completely different because he can comb his hair and wears normal navy blue socks. So they are now talking about carbon tax carny, right? <laughs> and I understand carbon tax carny has even decided to visit Canada and leave uh, Davos for, for a few weeks <laughs> to, to bring much of the, 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 the brilliance and wisdom from above. He's bu busy, you know, saying that we need to defund Canada's energy sector, all the while he makes, his company makes billions buying pipelines in the Middle East and in Latin America. Carbon tax Carney is going to jet in and tell Canadians how he's going to spend their money and run their lives. But Carbon Tax Carney is just like Justin. He's just like Justin. They're all just like Justin. And that's why in the next election, 
The Canadian people are going to choose a real change, a common sense conservative government that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. I didn't know that previously. I knew that he was a bit of a yucky guy, but um, I, I was not I was not aware of that. And it goes to show the political agendas and these ideologies that that people try to push down your throat. There's a deeper motivation behind it. There's something very nefarious and evil about it. That's why they're pushing it so hard. That's why they're trying to shame you into abiding by all of these things that in your gut just don't feel right. But at the end of the day, they don't actually care about any of this stuff that they're talking about. It's like Justin Trudeau all the time talking about carbon tax and, oh, we're going to save the globe, yet he's flying all over the place in private jets, having these exorbitant meals, going on these crazy vacations. It's like you don't actually care because if you did, you would lead by example because you would know how serious it was. Justin Trudeau's socialist amigos in, Val in uh, Venezuela demonstrated what happens every single time you print money and create cash to fund out-of-control government spending. Every single time it happens, whether it's an emperor, a king, a prime minister, or a president, when their opulence is too big for the nation's wallet, what do they do? They create cash, more money bidding on fewer goods equals higher prices, destroying the purchasing power of the working people. Those closest to government are always the first to touch the new money, the first to profit, and always get richer. The assets of the super rich grow in value while the paychecks and pensions of the working class lose their pay. It is an a, a transfer of wealth from the have-nots to the have yachts And that is what has happened here. It's ironic, eh, with these socialists. In the end, when they concentrate the wealth in the hands of government, who ends up benefiting? Those with the most political power, and those are always the most privileged and elite people. It is always the working class that ends up impoverished and lined up at food, food banks. Miss, my friends, the reality is that the foundation of any free market economy, of all prosperity, of all ec real economic justice is sound money. And that's why common sense conservatives will end the money printing. We will get our central bank back to the core mission of low inflation. We'll do that by addressing what is actually the disease. You see, inflation, debt, deficits, and high taxes are only the symptoms. The disease is overspending. Government that is metastasizing and growing faster than the people can afford. Here we have a government that has literally doubled the national debt in nine years. Trudeau's added more debt than all prior prime ministers combined. In fact, to do that, the money supply has grown by $700 billion, or about 35%, in the last four years, during which time the economy, the real economy, grew by about 4%. So we're actually growing the money almost 10 times faster than we're growing the stuff that money buys. It's like if you have 10 apples and... What are you laughing at? Shannon, are you okay over there? Shannon Stubbs is cut off, everybody. 10 apples and $10. It's a buck an apple. You double the number of dollars to 20, but you still have 10 apples. You're not twice as rich. It's just that each apple costs twice as much. That's why we're going to get rid of the money printing. But how? We need to bring in a common sense law that runs the, the finances of the nation the same way that single moms, small businesses, and seniors run their household finances. We will require the government... By law, find one dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending. That will allow the economy to grow while the government is capped. We will shrink the regulative size of the government and grow the free, productive economy are all around it. And then also to bring home lower prices. We will do the obvious thing. We will ax the carbon tax. Because the foundation of everything we have in this economy, everything we eat, Everything we use has to go by truck or train. Everything that comes off the farm field has to be taken using machines powered with diesel and gasoline. 
the oil and gas industry in this country is not the enemy. And when I'm Prime Minister, I will champion Canadian energy. Instead of creating more cash, we're going to create more of what cash buys, grow more food, build more homes, and produce more Canadian resources here in this country. We know how to do it. We need to unleash the, the unmatched might of the free enterprise system. We're going to... We'll have fast permits, low taxes, and more competition to drive this economy forward and produce the things that make life materially beneficial to every single person. And that starts by unleashing the production of our resources. A Polyev-led government will pass a common sense law to repeal the unconstitutional anti-resource law C-69. And we will replace it with a law that, yes, protects our environment, yes, consults our first peoples, and yes, gets decisions made. We will approve mines within 18 months rather than 18 years. We will, in addition to that, it's not just oil, though we do love Canada's oil sector, we will also unleash the production of more natural gas, LNG. When Trudeau took office, there were 18 proposed natural gas liquefaction projects on his desk. Not one of them has been completed. The only one that's approaching the finish line, LNG Canada, was approved by Stephen Harper in the last year of his government. We're going to, but we're going to, when I'm Prime Minister, we're going to give fast permits to LNG liquefaction. We're going to cool that gas to minus 161 degrees Celsius, ship it to Asia to displace dirty Asian coal, ship it to Europe. To, to, to displace the marketplace of the dictator in Moscow. We're going to turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. Bring it home. And here's the thing right there. I have so many friends, I've heard this in Parliament as well, who uh, from people who are liberal, where they always say that Pierre Polyev will just complain about everything that's going on, but that he has no plan. He just talks about the bad things, but there's zero plan whatsoever that he's ever addressed on how he's going to fix these things. And that's not true true. He has addressed how he plans on fixing these things several times. I was at his rally when he came to my province in Manitoba and he spoke the entire time about all the different initiatives he had in mind, all the different ideas and things that his party was working on to actually address these problems. And I'm so tired of people who are more left leaning saying that as an argument. Oh, well, Pierre Polyev, he has no plans. Yes, he does. Listen to him. The reason why you think he has no plans is because all you're doing is watching mainstream media. All you're doing is following along with whatever your friends are saying because you don't like him and you don't like him to the point where you're not willing to listen to him speak. Therefore, you are not listening to the plans that he lays out time and time again. Another issue that I have in general with just so many people these days, it's like if you don't like somebody, that's okay, but you should do your research and figure out why you don't like them. Do you not like them simply because somebody told you not to or because you think it's the right thing to do? Or do you not like them because you have heard all of his plans, you've heard all of the things that, he've said, that he has said, and that's what made you decide that you don't like that person? So many of us, when it comes to friendships and everything, it's like we have such a vitriolic behavior and, and gut reaction to somebody in our lives, whether it be a politician, whether it be your friend's girlfriend, I don't know, where you don't even give them the time of day to figure them out and make up your own mind. You're just going along with whatever the herd is saying. And I see that all the time in people who say things about Pierre Polyev that are bad. Nine times out of 10, these are people who have never actually sat down and listened to him for a long period of time because they don't like him and they don't want to listen to him. That is a huge problem on a societal level that each and every one of us needs to be better at. 
I listen to tons of people on YouTube that I don't necessarily agree with. Why? Because it helps me to form my opinions. It helps me to have better defenses against some of the things that I say because I'm very well aware of what's going on on either side instead of just blocking out the things that I don't like. And that's a really powerful way for you to be able to win any type of argument, not even just that, but for you to have very solid thinking on your own and to have a solid ground ground that you're standing on. You have reasoning behind all of these things, not just one version of events that's biased. And obviously conservative news and liberal news alike have a bias. That's why you have to investigate both and figure out what exactly it is that you think. I'm Jasmine Lane. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you next time.